Cardiac arrhythmias are common in Epstein's anomaly of tricuspid valve. Accessory pathways located along the abnormal tricuspid valve is the most important cause of arrhythmias associated with Epstein's anomaly. Accessory pathways are muscle bundles extending from the atrial myocardium to the ventricular myocardium across the annulus fibrosus. Accessory pathways may be seen in about one-third of patients with Epstein's anomaly. Other types of arrhythmia seen in Epstein's anomaly are ectopic atrial tachycardia, atrial flutter, intraatrial re-entrant tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, and ventricular tachyarrhythmia. In a study of 30 patients with Epstein's anomaly and cardiac arrhythmia, four had undergone surgeries. Among the four patients who had undergone surgery, three had atriotomy scar-related atrial re-entrant tachycardia. Among the 26 unoperated patients, one had typical AV nodal re-entrant tachycardia, AVNRT. The remaining had atrioventricular re-entrant tachycardia based on 39 accessory pathways indicating that multiple accessory pathways can occur in Epstein's anomaly. 27 of the accessory pathways had bidirectional conduction causing WPW syndrome, while 8 had concealed conduction. 4 had Mahem fibers. 26 of the 30 patients had radiofrequency catheter ablation sessions for ablation of arrhythmogenic substrates. Carpentier has classified Epstein's anomaly into four types. In type A, functional right ventricle is adequate and anterior tricuspid leaflet is normal. In type B, functional right ventricle is small but anterior tricuspid leaflet is normal. In type C, functional right ventricle is very small and anterior tricuspid leaflet has restricted mobility and may cause significant obstruction of the right ventricular outflow tract. In type D, functional right ventricle is only the infundibulum and anterior tricuspid leaflet is adherent to the wall. Absence of right bundle branch block, RBBB, in sinus rhythm in patients with Epstein's anomaly and supraventricular tachycardia is a highly sensitive and specific indicator of the presence of an ipsilateral accessory pathway. Usually, RBBB pattern appears in these cases after successful radiofrequency catheter ablation. Absence of RBBB pattern in ECG after catheter ablation should raise the suspicion for the presence of other accessory pathways which had been missed during ablation. Absence of RBBB is explained by the activation of the right ventricle by the accessory pathway producing narrowing of the QRS complex. In Epstein's anomaly, the right bundle branch is underdeveloped. The plicated atrialized right ventricle after repair of Epstein's anomaly is still arrhythmogenic. Some recommend incising the tricuspid annular ridge during surgery to disconnect potential accessory pathways, especially if the preoperative ECG has not shown an RBBB pattern. Post-operative ECG may show fractionated P waves indicating areas of slow conduction and scars which can predispose to intraatrial re-entry. While conventional axillary pathways except those in permanent junctional reciprocating tachycardia PJRT are non-responsive to adenosine, accessory pathways in Epstein's anomaly can respond to adenosine and verapamil. In one case, the tachycardia ECG showed left bundle branch block-like pattern with superior axis and was terminated with injection verapamil. Detailed mapping showed an atriofesicular pathway located in the right posterolateral region which was successfully ablated. RBBB pattern with splintered QRS, characteristic of Epstein's anomaly, was noted after ablation. Sudden death in Epstein's anomaly is another important concern. In a study of 968 patients spanning over four decades from Mayo Clinic 
0.74% had placement of an implantable cardioverter defibrillator ICD. Of the 968 patients in the study, 79.8% had severe Epstein's anomaly and 18.6% had accessory pathway. Cumulative incidence of sudden death increased as age advanced. It was 0.8% at 10 years and 14.6% at 70 years. Previous episode of ventricular tachycardia, heart failure, tricuspid valve surgery, syncope, pulmonary stenosis and hemoglobin level above 15 grams per deciliter were the multivariable predictors of sudden death. First set of journal references. Second set of journal references. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share and post your valuable comment below this video.